Scissor, sister, sister, wife. Please, my mother, drop your knife. It can result to a loss of a life. Do not violate a right. Oh, my daddy is a right. Do not force that to a knife. Good day, viewers and listeners. My name is Maria Magdom. I am happy to welcome you to our virtual learning class on gender based violence. This program is brought to you by the Network Against Gender Based Violence in partnership with Action Aid International of the Gambia with funding from Amplify Change. Class 8 will be presented by Mr. Alujiba, who will take us through the laws prohibiting female genital mutilation and child marriage. Hello wonderful viewers and listeners. I am Alujiba, um, a member of HIFOSHI Youth Platform the Gambia, as well as a people legal practitioner working with Toro the Chambers. Um, my presentation would basically be centered on the Women's Amendment Act 2015, that is the Anti-FGM Act 2015, and the Children's Amendment Act 2015, which is the law prohibiting child marriage. Um, first, before delving deep into the presentation, we would look at the background of the, the law on Women's Amendment Act 2015. Uh, the Women's Amendment Act 2015 was assented by the President on the 27th day of uh, December 2015. And um, for the purpose of reference, the Act may be cited as the Women's Amendment Act 2015. Um, the principal act is amended by inserting immediately after section 32, section 32A and section 32B. And the act basically has two sections with one highlighting the prohibition of female circumcision and the other dealing with accomplices to female circumcision. For the purpose of this presentation, attention will be first centered on the prohibition of the practice and the legal consequences attached. Section 32A, like I said, prohibits female circumcision. Subsection 1 of the said section, that is subsection 1 of 32A, provides that a person shall not engage in female circumcision. Post 1 to subsection 2, a person who engages in female circumcision commits an offence and is liable on conviction to a imprisonment for a term, a term of three years or to a fine of $50,000 or both. And b, where the practice results to death, then to mandatory life imprisonment. According to section 3, the practice of female circumcision includes the following. That is the types of the practice that are prohibited by law. Um, the first one is the insertion of the prepos with the partial or total excision of the clitoris. That is the clitodictonomy. This is referred to as type 1. Um, type 2, which includes the partial or total removal, excision of the labia minora. This is referred to as type 2, like I said. And type 3, which includes the partial or total excision of the external genitalia. In bracket, we have the labia minora and the labia majora, including stitching, and this is referred to as type 3. Um, it does not only stop at the, the three types that I made mention of. Um, we have a type which is regarded which others would call type 4. However, we would often refer to it as um, the unclassified, which includes the stitching, stitching with thorns, straws, and threads, other means in order to connect the excision of the labia and the cutting of the vagina, the introduction of corrosive substances into the vagina for the purpose of narrowing. This is also a practice um, that is classified under female genital mutilation. Another type that we also look into is the symbolic practices that involve the nicking, pricking of the clitoris to release drops of blood. And then the law also prohibits engaging in any form of genital mutilation or cutting. Um, Section 32B which is the second component of the Act, that is the Women's Amendment Act 2015, deals with accomplices. When we, do, we talk about accomplices as per the Act, these are persons who request, they incite, they promote female circumcision by either providing the tools or by any other means to commit the offence. If one is found one thing of participating in the Act in any of the forms that are stated under Section 32B, then it will attract a prison term of three years or a fine of $50,000 or both. To proceed, it says a person who knows that you know, on the accomplices, you do not only uh, um, involve in active participation, where you know that the practice is being committed, is about to be committed, or has taken place, or is about to take place, and you fail without any good cause to inform the authorities, as the case may be. You also commit an offence, and you are liable on conviction to a fine of $10,000. By and large, that is the presentation on Women's Amendment Act. Now we will proceed to the second aspect of it, which includes the Children's Amendment Act 2016. Like I said, the Children's Amendment Act 2016 was assented um, by the President on the 26th day of July 2016. This act may be cited for the purpose of reference as the Children's Amendment Act 2016. The act, um, there are section two of the principal act, 
is amended. That is section two of the Children's uh, um, Act 2005 is amended by inserting immediately after the definition of child abuse, a new definition. Now this definition reads, a child, child marriage means marriage that is contracted between a child and an adult or between a child and another child. That is by, defini by far the definition of what constitutes um, child's marriage, child marriage. Section 24 and 25 of the Principal Act are equally amended and substituted with section 25 and 24. The former prohibits, that is section 24, prohibits child marriage and the latter prohibits child betrothal. For the purpose of this presentation, attention will be centered on the prohibition of the practice and the legal consequences it attracts. Um, section 24, which deals with prohibition of child marriage, section 24 provides that a child shall not be capable of contracting a valid marriage and that and as such child marriage is prohibited. When you look at the wordings of the prohibition, it is mandatory. It does not give any room for one to exercise a form of discretion. It says a child shall not be capable of contracting a valid marriage and child marriage is prohibited. Now, pursuant to sex, subsection 2, a parent, guardian or adult who willfully, now it's, it, here it deals with the manner in which parents, the guardians or adults, their participation in as much as child marriage is concerned. They say now, now it says a parent, guardian or child who willfully contracts a marriage on behalf of a child causes a child to contract a marriage or forces a child to contract a marriage, commits an offense and is liable on conviction to imprisonment for a time not exceeding 20 years. The, you can go for imprisonment for 20 years, for 19 years, 15 years, depending on the judge in question. However, the, the imprisonment should not exceed 20 years. It says that the Act further provides under subsection 3 of 24 that an adult who willfully aids, abets a parent or guardian or any other adult to commit an offense under subsection 2 or conspires with a parent, guardian or another adult to commit an offense under subsection 2, commits an offense and is liable on conviction to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 20 years. So this would equally be punished as affecting the practice or being phys physically conducting the practice. So where you aid, you abet a parent or guardian to conduct the practice, you would equally be punished as the principal. Under sub subsection 4 of the said section, that is section 24, uh, it provides that an adult who becomes aware of the commission of an offence under subsection 2 by a parent or guardian or any other adult and intentionally fails to report it, commits an offence and is liable on conviction to imprisonment not exceeding 10 years. Now here what subsection 4 deals with, you know, um, we are fond of saying that I am not the person that is committing the offence so it is not my business. This law does not deal with that. What it is saying here is when you know that the practice has been committed, it's about to be committed, or you aid, you abet in any way, then if you are found one thing, you can go for imprisonment for a term um, not exceeding 10 years. It is important for us to note that the court that has jurisdiction over the commission of the offence under this section, that is under subsection 2, 3 and 4, subsection 2, like let me go back to it, deals with the, the practice, um, 3 deals with persons that aid and abet, and then 4 deals with knowing and not reporting, then it is the High Court of the Gambia that has jurisdiction over these sections. To proceed further, like I made mention that the Act deals with the amendment, that is the Children's Amendment Act 2016, has two principal sections, that is the prohibition of child marriage and then the prohibition of child betrothal. Now the second component, which is child betrothal, it says that a parent, guardian or any other adult who willfully betroths a child to a person, to any person, or makes a child the subject of a dowry transaction, commits an offence and is liable on conviction to imprisonment not exceeding 20 years. Equally, it is the High Court of the Gambia that has jurisdiction over this offence. To end with, our efforts and desire as a nation to combat the COVID-19 pandemic would be incomplete, if not meaningless, if we continue to give a blind eye to the realities of harmful traditional practices and child marriage in our communities during this period. Stay tuned, my colleague Lavin Fati would be dealing with the class on child abuse. Thank you all. Dear viewers and listeners, my name is Bintugasama. I'm the executive director of Women's Bureau under the Ministry of Women, Children and Social Welfare. As just presented, female genital mutilation, known as circumcision and child marriage, are illegal and banned in the Gambia. And um, they could have health implications. The practice is very dangerous to the reproductive health of women and girls and we should desist from these harmful traditional practices. And they are a violation of the human rights of the girl child. I therefore urge all parents to ensure that we protect our women and girls from these 
harmful practices. I thank you. Sister, 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 wife, please, my mother, drop your knife. It can result to a loss of a life. Do not violate a right. Oh, my daddy is a right. Do not force that to annihilate my way. Do not 